so feedback mechanism is actually a process by which we can uh, we see that the endocrine glands they actually either uh, produce like high amount of the hormones means high concentration of the hormones or it they, it produces low concentration of the hormones means the hypersecretion and the hyposecretion of the endocrine glands uh, is what is known as feedback because this entire process is regulated due to the concentration of the hormone that is going to be present in the cell or uh, in this in the body system uh, and that what governs the entire uh, process of secretion means if found in less quantity so more and more secretion will take place if found in uh, higher quantity then lesser uh, secretion will take place that particular way of regulation uh, this total mechanism is what is known as the feedback mechanism of the uh, hormone secretion now for that particular reason there are many ways it will be governed but always the main factor that plays a role will be a stimulus which is which is somehow the uh, like inducing a stimulus which is somehow inducing the hypothalamus like many of the cases we find that the hypothalamus is getting the uh, induction and thus hypothalamus is sending the signal to the anterior pituitary that uh, it needs to secrete certain hormone so hypothalamus uh, secreting the regulatory hormone which is going to the pituitary now the pituitary will start releasing the hormone and that hormone will be now carried by the entire uh, like the blood running through it to the desired location let's say we are talking about the thyroid gland so in the thyroid gland we know there are uh, this thyroxine hormone is produced and the thyroxine hormone is actually responsible for regulating body's metabolic rate so what actually happen is from this uh, from the hypothalamus the tsh regulating re releasing factor is actually released there okay and that synthesize that leads to production of the tsh hormone from the pituitary which will be like carried by the blood straight into the thyroid gland and then in the thyroid gland the thyroxine hormone is actually produced i am just writing it thyroxine here so thyroxine is produced now thyroxine will be now going into the blood stream isn't it so it will go into the blood stream now blood will actually carry it to the entire systemic part of the body means systemic uh, secretion will happen now systemic distribution we can say so after systemic distribution what will happen this systemic distribution will increase the basal metabolic rate of the body because thyroxine hormone is responsible for increasing the basal metabolic rate so thus from that particular uh, like thyroid gland whatever thyroxine is produced it will now flow to the entire body and will increase the body's metabolic rate the basal metabolic rate now that way we can say that it will uh, like control the entire level of uh, metabolism all different different types of metabolism everything but where did it start from it start from right here in the in the hypothalamus where hypothalamus was producing the thyroid stimulating hormone releasing factor or releasing hormone from there which was secreted by the hypothalamus it goes down straight into the pituitary now the pituitary is induced to secrete the tsh hormone then the tsh hormone will go to thyroid and then thyroid will produce the thyroxine now when this is necessary this is necessary when the body is finding that it needs to increase its metabolism due to some sort of external stimulus maybe the environment has uh, become comparatively cold or something or uh, maybe the environment like environmental factor is uh, inducing or it it demands a little higher metabolic rate and thus that stimulus is going to trigger the hypothalamus to lead to this particular sort of secretion uh, process so once that entire process is down means i mean uh, that entire stimulus is actually now uh, it it is not in need means probably the situation whatever has changed that uh, demand that particular increase in the bmr now when that situation will come back to the previous state that very moment this excessive thyroxine since it is not required this excessive thyroxine will now send uh, the signal state means that 
thyroxine is now present in excessive amount it will go and send the signal to the hypothalamus which will actually stop the secretion of the TSH now so once this TSH secretion will be stopped bus TSH I mean TSH RH secretion is stopped means the entire process will stop that is what is known as a feedback mechanism uh, it is not completely uh, specific to only this particular factor there are there are uh, many ways of regulating it for example if somebody is in uh, its stress situation in that stress situation we know that our adrenal gland they produces this adrenaline hormone but which one produces it mostly it is actually the adrenal medulla let, let me do one thing let me just color this thing uh, for you so so if we say that the adrenal medulla is responsible for secretion of the uh, adrenaline hormone okay so this one is producing adrenaline now what does adrenaline do well it actually help us to fight the entire uh, like situation of stress whatever stress was there it will help us uh, like by increasing metabolism with uh, by increasing metabolism increasing cardiac activity it increases uh, respiration also even like our breathing and everything it changes okay so all of that will also trigger our uh, brain to work even far more efficiently so adrenaline actually induces all these different different factors isn't it so adrenaline goes to the entire body uh, it distributes definitely through the uh, entire body and then it actually do all this thing to the entire body different different part of our body it actually induces all these things now when that happens that happens when we are at like when we actually feel some sort of stress a dangerous situation or something you know this stress is going to be uh, considered or actually is going to be like uh, carried this message is going to be carried by a neuron it's mostly an uh, autonomic nervous uh, system type neuron so it will actually simply go and induce or actually create a signal straight into the medulla of the adrenaline gland uh, sorry adrenal gland uh, let me write it here adrenal gland and that now will produce the adrenaline so that it can be like uh, the problem can be sorted out okay but this sympathetic nerve that is actually responsible for this particular sympathetic nerve that is responsible for the secretion of the adrenal uh, like which induces the secretion of the adrenal medulla now the moment that uh, stress is over this stress whatever was uh, making this to go and secrete it like uh, induce it the moment this stress is over this will stop secreting the uh, means whatever like secretion like it, this will actually stop uh, inducing the adrenaline uh, adrenal gland thus adrenal secretion will stop and thus all this process will come back to the previous normal state so this all activities this is something that is governed by the stress so always the one that is the stimulus is going to be responsible for all this uh, all this like uh, re secretion regulation and everything every feedback and uh, mechanism it is definitely the stimulus is responsible for that so in both the cases we can find that whatever stimulus is taking place it is actually controlling the entire body's uh, different secretion of the endocrine gland uh, but whenever the stress is or the stimulation uh, that stimulus is uh, gone the entire process will come back to the previous normal state but even even after this uh, even like this is all re regulated by the like nervous system we can say but even after this even our uh, metabolic uh, means many metabolic processes that is also regulated by simply the presence of the uh, metabolite means for example if you take the example of insulin insulin what it what it does I'll, I'll just I'll do one thing I'll write it here so uh, insulin what it does insulin actually uh, it, it, it distributes to the entire body and it actually what it makes is like uh, if we have our blood 
uh, yeah let's do one thing uh, so this is our blood uh, blood vessel so <clears throat> so what it does is like this blood vessel uh, the moment the insulin is actually there in the blood vessel so the adjacent tissues that are there all the adjacent tissues that are there this will start taking in a lot of glucose so glucose absorption it increases means the amount of absorption of glucose increases in the tissue that is what happened right because insulin actually induced them to do that but the moment there is way too much absorption of glucose and the blood glucose level it drops that very moment uh, that very moment what we have is like we have this second hormone called the glucagon glucagon it will uh, it will go to the liver say this is a liver i not going to like good diagram of liver definitely but uh, let's say this is a liver so uh, like that okay so the liver in the liver we find that uh, this actually triggers conversion of glycogen to glucose right it converts the glycogen to glucose and this glucose where will it go it will go straight to this blood that blood vessel only means it will be carried by the blood so once that happens what we have what happens what do we see we see that there is an increase in glucose level right so insulin is actually making the blood glucose to be absorbed by the tissues thus uh i'll do one thing it, it looks like absor uh, right? Huh? absorption of glucose it increases right now absorption of glucose increases by the by the cell so blood glucose level actually it drops now that drop in blood glucose level will actually trigger glucagon to go and uh, produce more and more glucose from the reserve food and thus blood glucose level will come back to the normal state but keep in mind this is not going to happen when we have consumed our food because the moment we consumed our food there is an abundance of glucose there already in the blood and thus that particular uh, glucose will actually be absorbed by this uh, tissues normally with the action of insulin but whenever that particular blood glucose level it actually means uh, the, the food that is that has been uh, absorbed is gone means there is no longer any absorbed food there uh, that time the glucagon will come and will start producing the glucose that happens okay so that way it is just by the presence of the glucose in the blood like in what particular way if we are in the fasting state then it is glucagon responsible for secreting it but if it is in the normal state means uh, abs like we have already uh, had our food and then we have uh, like large amount of glucose uh, in the blood that time it's only insulin working glucagon is completely shut down that time so that way the entire blood glucose level its homeostasis is maintained by the by these two particular hormone the insulin and the glucagon but how they are regulated it is simply by the feedback system where one it just checks that presence whether it is in high quantity or not if high quantity they completely stop secreting it even like if the glucose is uh, like excessive like very less amount of glucose is there in the blood insulin will not come and secrete means insulin will not be secreted at that time because if there is a small quantity of glucose there and insulin is again making that glucose to get absorbed by the tissue body will lose all the all the glucose from the blood and that is going to be very bad because it, it will uh, change or disrupt the entire osmotic balance of the blood going to be very disastrous that's why insulin production is stops right that right moment where the concentration of the glucose it drops so that way all of the system they are working in sync like one another they are they are definitely controlled by different different ways but they are controlled and the secretion of the com, com, like chemical compound depending on the stress or depending on the stimulus or depending on the metabolite whatever it is they all are uh, in a feedback mechanism they all maintain a feedback mechanism where the secretion is regulated either they are secreted in high quantity or in low quantity depending upon the need that will be the feedback mechanism of hormone release